The Disrupt Education vlog can be found on YouTube. To hear it in podcast form, search Disrupt Education on any of the following podcast platforms. Anchor, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Breaker, CastBox, Overcast, Radio Public, Pocket Cast, Spotify, or Stitcher. Welcome to the Disrupt Education Podcast. I'm Peter Hostrauss of the host. Thank you all for hanging out with us today. I've got a great treat here. Uh, reconnected with an old buddy of mine uh, from back in the high school days. Shout out to John Glenn High School, Walkerton in North Liberty, Indiana. Andrew Groves is with us. Uh, just a little bit of an update on this guy. He made it to the show in the baseball uh in in the baseball that sounds so terrible in baseball uh and uh and uh he's got an interesting route to uh share with us uh but andrew i want to thank you so much for uh being on the podcast with us man awesome pete looking forward to it and thanks for having me on it's it's, it's always good connecting with the guys back home and from the little town that we're from it's we've come a long way yeah we you know i think there's two thousand people in our, our towns combined and yeah uh, it's great to reconnect again for I think sure there's two thousand people on my block here where i'm at now <laughs> yeah right? exactly so. Um, but yeah, tell us a little bit about, uh, your, your background, like who you are, what do you, what do you do now? And then we'll get back into your education. Awesome. Pete, I've been, um, like you said, I'm Andrew Groves. I'm originally from North Liberty, Indiana, where next door to you in Walkerton, I work in, uh, in regenerative dentistry right now. I work with primarily oral surgeons and, and, uh, periodontists in the Chicago land and Wisconsin area. I sell a, a really high tech, uh, a, a bone and a membrane used for surgery. Uh, it's an interesting job. It's super challenging. I work for a great company that's uh, based in Switzerland. That's phenomenal. Um, it's a really good job. It's taken me a long time to get to the level that I am. I'm really lucky to be here. And it, it's it's been a long time that you kind of go through some jobs that you thought maybe that was for me, maybe, maybe that wasn't. And it all kind of happens for a reason to get where you are. And that's kind of my bit of my story is I've taken a step up and a step back and three steps forward and one step back. And I think for me, it's just going in the right direction is kind of where I've got to where I am right now. Yeah. Yeah. So it, It's very interesting. Um, as a matter of fact, when I was doing my student teaching, I remember you in high school and I was actually a student teacher there. I remember a couple of our conversations uh, in the lunchroom and, and I don't even remember, you know, when we were in class together. I'm sure we were. But let's go back into your uh, education. Let's let's look at that. Um, you know, even before high school and into baseball and, and those in uh, and, and all around athlete by the way uh which you can do at uh, the small schools where where we grew up um yeah exactly it's, it's a little bit more difficult in the bigger school systems but um take us back through kind of your your avenue of education and and how did you end up well let's take it from basically early on until we get to uh purdue university and then we'll take it from there uh, one of my regrets that i have and not that I'm living in the past by any means, but I'm a son of two school teachers that education should have been more priority for myself than it was. And it wasn't that my parents didn't drive me a certain way or want me to do something, but I didn't do the work that I needed to do in high school. And I knew that. Um, I, I knew I was going to get an athletic scholarship from probably my freshman or sophomore year. I knew where I was going to be able to play Division One, And the difference is to Pete is everyone's kind of locked down on like getting into college as, as an athlete now that you just think, Oh, you can get in. And I remember when I got into Purdue, they didn't need, they, they took my transcript and test scores didn't matter. And so I just had to take the SAT. So I didn't take it as serious as I should have in high school. And that's the difference now of having a degree from Northwestern and Notre Dame. And there's nothing wrong with a Purdue degree, but there's definitely a step up from some of these schools where I could have been, and I could have played athletically if I would have taken it a little bit more serious. I was a 2.5 to 2.7 student in high school. Mm -hmm. Could I have been more if I would have done it? Absolutely. And that's on a four scale. We've been out so long, Pete, we don't know whether it's a four <laughs> or five scale. Right. I didn't take the ACT. I just took the SAT. And I remember that at the end of it, when I committed to Purdue, I said, well, I, I got to take these tests. And they said, all you got to do is just your SAT. And that's what they needed in Indiana at the time. So if I were to do something again, it was buckle down when you're a freshman and a sophomore and, you know, and, and do a little bit and start bringing books home as a junior and senior. And I had senioritis at the beginning of my junior year. <laughs> so I committed to Purdue in the fall of my senior year. And once I was in, it was like, well, what do you do now? And at 36 years old, I look back on it and said, I should have studied harder. 
Mm-hmm. And I'll work with, I was talking to a, a colleague of mine yesterday who was one of the top periodontists in all of Chicago. And the guy, we're the same age. And the difference is, is he's, you know, in the chair working on a patient. I'm standing behind him trying to help him with a, you know, the, the material. Mm-hmm. And the biggest difference is, is that guy buckled down. is not that he was smarter than me or a better, he was a better student, but we both had, it's what you do with that gift you had. And mm-hmm. I said something to him yesterday. I was on the phone. I said, you know what? I wish I would have done what you did. Mm-hmm. Right. He's got a better life as far as financially. He makes more. Mm-hmm. Um, he's got different opportunities that I never had by doing the work when you're younger. And I look back on it, Pete, and I thought I could have done that if I would have buckled in a little bit more. Right. And it was at college. My first. So when we go to college, my first semester, I had a 4.0. And it was because that was the first time that I actually buckled in and did something. Yeah. And I won't forget that. That's you unique. Know, but, that's really yeah, well, unique for first, an athlete, right? To to, yeah. to go in. Um, well, let's dig into that year. That's very interesting because what my my older brother was uh, he he was in D two uh, went to baseball, and man, he's probably going to beat me up for saying this, but he did not do well that first year, you know. And he was about the same range as you in high school. Um, how how what clicked? What clicked there when you when you stepped it was, on it campus? was I had to sit in. I was an academic all Big Ten my first year mm-hmm. because they we had required study tables. Mm-hmm. There was no required study table at home. There mm-hmm. wasn't. And um that were the day those were the days that hey, my brother and I were working a job. We got home, we both had girlfriends. Mm-hmm. The last thing I wanted to do was sit down and look at chemistry or, or or do algebra, whatever it was. But once they said, All right. For 15 hours a week, you're going to sit in this room right here and you're going to study. And that's the day before cell phones. That's the day before a laptop. We didn't have an iPad. Mm -hmm. You sat in there with paper and pen and you got to work and you studied. And I remember my my coach was like, how did that? Like He actually said the same thing. What's different? (laughs) And I prided myself going through Purdue as a, a, a very good student with good grades. And I thought, what went on here? And that was the difference is I was required to do it. Hmm. And it was nothing against my parents by any means Mm -hmm. because, all right, I was getting by. I wasn't in trouble in high school. I didn't have any issues. I wasn't, you know, skipping school. I just didn't study for tests and like the normal high school student. And I learned that later that once I got to Purdue, I said, I can't keep doing this anymore because, number one, I'd lose my athletic scholarship. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing I could not do. And I owed it to myself that, all right, you've come too, too far to flunk out of school to be in, academically ineligible for something like that to happen. So I really buckled down and I mean, I worked hard in school. I did. Yeah. And that's, it was not too little too late, but I still, I look back on it. And I said, I, I wish I would have done more. Right. So the decision then not to go, I mean, did you have offers to go into the league before? Cause I know we had a lot of guys who would be like, I'm going to go into single A ball or double A ball or start, yeah. you know, going through that. And so then what was that school, decision like? Yeah, like, cause absolutely. you did four years, you got a degree and then you, uh, yeah, well, went the, on. the funny part of it is I was drafted out of high school mm-hmm. and I, I wrote a goal down my junior year and we were in the sectional over at Jimtown, mm-hmm. right? To throw yeah. it way back. The Jimmy's. And, uh, <laughs> there was a scout, a professional scout came to the game. And I remember I said, this is, this is absurd. Like uh, what's this guy doing? I, I didn't ever think about playing in the minor leagues and the, the opportunity to play at a professional level. And I was actually drafted after my senior year by the Kansas city Royals. Mm-hmm. And I thought, Oh my God, like maybe I won't go to college. So what ended up happening, I, I talked to my mom and dad, I sat down and they were going to send me to out of Idaho falls, Iowa. I was going to make $850 a month. And I thought, okay, now a Purdue education that is going to be with me for my entire life opposed to going in right away. Now, my chances would have been better if I would have signed with the Royals right out of high school to end up making, I would have had more opportunities. I probably would have got a signing bonus more than I got in college. Um, it would have given me more opportunities to be a professional from a younger age. Mm-hmm. So I gambled, not necessarily a gamble, but when I went to school, that's when it was like, all right, now you have another chance to get drafted. So when I played and the rules are constantly changing in college baseball, but at the time you either had to complete one year of junior college, or if you went to a four year, you had to complete three years and be 21 years old. Mm -hmm. So after, after school, after I was actually drafted as a senior out of Purdue, I went in the 11th round and um, it was what a a crazy thing about baseball. It's a lot of it's luck. Pete, a lot of it is being seen on the right day. Mm -hmm. Uh, There, the funny part when I got drafted where I got a break and a lot of times in professional baseball, I've said this, as long as I played and when I w- was in the minor leagues, I said, 
the guys that make the major leagues are not necessarily the best players. Those are the guys that have made the best of the opportunities that they've been given when the right people are in town. Mm. And I also think, and not to sound crazy, but luck is where preparation meets the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And that, okay, you're going to, you create your own luck. So my senior year, I was playing a game in, we were playing Ohio state at home. It was on a Sunday and I didn't pitch on a Friday or a Saturday and Sunday was our last game. And a guy's name was Corey Lupke. I can still remember this like it was yesterday. Every game in the area was rained out. So IU got rained out, Notre Dame got rained out, and U of I got rained out. So the only game that scouts came to was the game at Purdue. <laughs> and everyone was there to see this. Uh, he was going to be a first-round pick. He was probably drafted in the, the top 15 picks. So everyone was there to see him. Well, like I said, well, the luck came into this is when I came in, Pete, I came in, I was 94 to 96 miles an hour mm -hmm. and <laughs> people had no idea where it came from, but it just, sometimes it was just like, you need breaks. And that was my break. Mm. And the funny part of it, I saw him in the minor leagues. He was with the San Diego Padres organization. We were in Eugene, Oregon. And I said, I owe you a handshake. And I said, I would never, and I thank you. I said, I would never have been in this position I was if it wasn't for you. Mm -hmm. And it was true. That's what happened where I was drafted to be able to do that. It took one guy. <laughs> <laughs> to be able to, to, to do it. But all the scouts in the area were there, and right. that one day got me drafted. Now, it was – did that day help? Sure, but it was a preparation I did, you know, yeah. early in the year to get there. And I remember that, and there was a life lesson that you don't know who's watching. And sometimes you just – it just clicks for you, and that's what happened. Yeah. And so one day of, 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 with a good senior year I had at Purdue – it was just, but that was kind of the highlight. With some is weather. When, with <laughs> some, some weather, weather if, right? If the, game, if the games weren't rained out, that was the break I needed. Oh, man. And I think that baseball is about getting breaks. Right. It is. There's a lot of good guys that are in the minor leagues that, that you know, didn't perform when, you know, a director of player personnel were in town or when they got called up. You'll see them. They're called up one game and they strike out three times. If that guy hits two or three home runs or, or you know, goes two for three or three for four or four for six they're going to keep him up right it is right. such just um <laughs> it's a lot of luck it really is yeah but it, most professions you know that you have to have some luck here and there absolutely absolutely so like i want to if people aren't watching this on youtube like i have my i told you i have my money ball shirt on it's just kind of funny we were talking about it for for people who uh understand money ball but um the the one thing that that really strikes me as an educator, and I've had some people go into uh, the premier leagues like NBA, uh, a couple into, uh, you know, Major League Soccer, um, had uh, an Olympian in class. Um, there is something different, but then there's always I mean, everybody has that dream sometime or another and as an athlete, you know, even when I was like in middle school playing football, I was like, I'm gonna be a football player and then but as it goes through. What kind of illusions do a lot of these students have that, that you have seen? Um, because you didn't have the illusion. You just kind of knew it and, and you put in a lot of work. And you're being very humble about that because I know, you, I, I know you, I know your family, I know the amount of work you put into baseball and the amount of thought process you put into it. And, and, but we have a lot of these athletes that are they're pretty good. You know, I'm not going to say they're bad, but what does it really take – mentally and educationally to get to a point to where you are outside of the luck to where you are even in that gymnasium or on that field where there's a possibility it's a great question i think that it's the right mindset it's the not only the right mindset you have to have the beautiful part of baseball is you don't have to be the tallest the fastest the strongest but you have to have the right combination of that and that's why i was i wasn't the strongest i wasn't the strongest guy in the weight room I sure wasn't the quickest. Uh, mentally, there's always stuff you could do. There's guys that pitch in the major leagues at 88 miles an hour. That's incredible. They make the ball move. It's having the right combination of that. Now, you get into football and basketball, it's a little bit different. Soccer, you talked about. These Olympians, they are incredible athletes. Sometimes what you'll see in baseball, it's you don't always have to have the absolute best of everything. You mm -hmm. have to have the right combination. And what I lacked in physical ability, you know, I, I was lucky with the right arm. My arm action was good. Right? I can make the ball move. I can make the ball do things that most people probably couldn't. That's the difference is like having the right makeup and the right setup. What I think is amazing is there's a stat like 99.8% of baseball players, they get cut at one time. Like what's the end of your, like, unless you're in the hall of fame and you go out on your own terms, 
most baseball players are released. When someone says they're released, they're basically cut or you're fired. Mm -hmm. And it's a funny word to say, like, oh, I was released. No, you were cut. Or they, they fired you. You can say literally whatever you want. So, like, most people don't go out on their own terms. The guys that do go out on their own terms are you weren't good enough to stay at that level. Or you didn't, you weren't a Hall of Fame caliber player where, okay, you're 43 years old. And you see guys like Tom Brady and Drew Brees. These guys are playing at 42 and 41 years old. That's an incredible makeup of both physicality, the mental break, the, the mental toughness that these guys have. It's having the right combination. And that's why I think I was successful at baseball is I could put it together. Mm -hmm. Whether it was like, all right, the preparation, the consistency, the um, – not only the, the physical preparation, the mental preparation, Pete, that was just as hard. And when you got to college, it wasn't, all right, you know, I'm, it's a little bit different than high school. Every step you went up was different. Right. The game got, the game moved faster. The, 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 you, every guy you're facing against Ohio State and Minnesota and IU, they're all the, the best hitters of, of a big high school typically. Mm -hmm. So you had to prepare at a different level. And when I actually got to the minor leagues and played professionally, those were the best of the best. And those guys were some guys that are still playing. So it's just having the right makeup to be able to get out there and do it. And the guys that were the most successful had that figured out. And why am I selling? Why am I in the dental space right now and not continue to play? Because the end of my rope was there. I, mm -hmm. I knew that it was hard to be like, all right, yeah, I couldn't make the adjustments to continue playing. And that is something that the way that these guys do it year in and year out is unbelievable, especially as a pitcher, mm -hmm. because you have to go every year. Someone else is coming for you. Right. So it's the mental makeup. Everything comes for you that you get a year younger and the guys in the minor league say the same age because they just keep turning over. Yeah. So yeah. that was a tricky part for me. And I, I very few people make it, you mm -hmm. know, to the level I did. And I was lucky to do it. Mm -hmm. But it's it's a challenge. It really is a challenge, Pete, to to have the right makeup and the right chemistry to get there. Yeah. I, and you know, one of the, one of the amazing, and I love the fact that, that you retold the, the last time we actually spoke, you were giving a speech to a, a post Legion post uh, team. Actually, I think it was my brother's uh, baseball team at the time. And, and you really put out there the, that, you know, there are four or five people every day coming for your position when you get to that and, and the, the pressures and, and how you actually handle that. So I want to take the, that's a skill set. And, and, and talking about what you have learned through your sport, and let's, I mean, baseball has so many lessons, but what are some of the things that like baseball players now, like even in high school, are some of those skill sets that people don't really realize they're gaining, that they, they can actually take into a job situation or, or, you know, an interview or something like that. What, what are maybe, you know, two or three of those, there's millions of them, but what has worked for you? Obviously high pressure situations probably don't bother you too much. <laughs> no, I think that's a, that's a great question, Pete, because at 36 years old, I still talk about teamwork in baseball 10 years after I played in every job interview or when you're finding middle ground with someone. And it's like, why is that? Well, teamwork, like you work well with others. Just being on a team is something that you're going to talk about. And do you play a sport in college? And, and I, I've always wondered this too. It's if you're a high school athlete, do you play a sport just to like get seen? Or is it, is it that you want to learn teamwork? You want to be reliable. You can, people can depend on you. And that's what like playing at a, at a, on a team, it really teaches you the older you get, the more you realize that it wasn't about wins and losses and that helped and success is great, but it's being dependable, being on time, the stuff that now as an adult, if you don't do, you're not going to be at a company long enough mm -hmm. and you're not going to continue climbing the ladder. If you're late all the time, no one can depend on you. You're selfish. That kind of stuff is if you're if you're always taking and not giving, those are the things that you're not going to be able. They're not going to keep you around long enough. And that's what sports has taught, whether it's baseball or football. The higher up you go, high, high school sports are one thing. The higher you go to college and professional they, there's enough talent that they don't need you to be there. If you're going to be a selfish, you know, selfish player and you, you, you're all about yourself, you're not going to stay around long. Mm -hmm. You're not because talent only goes so far. So as you get older and you're going to go through a job interview and they're going to say, oh, I see that you played, you know, you played baseball here. What did you learn? I, I learned it's, 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 everything's about priorities. What did you prioritize to be at that level? It's about holding true to yourself, the hard work you do with no one's watching, those are the things that why you play high school sports and college sports to continue building that. Mm -hmm. 
Great, great stuff there. All right, I'm going to end end on advice to give. So say you have parents, and there's a lot. It's changed uh, since we were younger. I'm going to categorize myself with your age a little bit here, uh, even though I'm a little older. But um, it, it's. I feel like, you know, these parents now in this generation – is a little bit different than the generation of parents that we had around athletics. Um, yeah, there was there was um, you know different types of uh, leagues and different things like that, but now it has become unbelievably competitive at a younger and younger ages. And there's a lot of stress. There's a lot of all these different things. So as a parent now, which you're going to be soon, so congratulations on that. Um, what, what advice would you give parents of athletes in middle school or high school right now? Let my best advice, I can think if, if, if your child is passionate about something, Pete, you, you support them at everything. I did not get where I was without my mom and dad, my grandparents, just a support system. If you're passionate about uh, the drama department, then absolutely run after it. If you want to be the absolute best downhill skier, then do it right and do what you have to do to get to that level and be passionate about something i was passionate about baseball i still am i love watching baseball but pete if you are passionate and you have a true interest in something do whatever you can for your child to support them in any way possible whether it's the emotional support whether it's getting them lessons whether it's you watching youtube videos on something to make yourself better equipped to give them advice and I would not have got there without my mom and dad. There's Mm -hmm. no chance. And I'm not, I was very lucky to have just a good support system, but they saw that they knew that. And I wasn't pushed to anything. Um, Our dads, Pete, are are football guys. You know, that they they weren't necessarily baseball was there. Absolutely. But my dad and, you know, my dad played for your dad in football. Yeah, and Actually, I your dad was my coach in football in high school. It's for funny how yeah. it works. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think that Pete, that, if you're passionate about something, equip yourself to help out your children. And being a father here any day now, that's kind of what, if you get ready to have a kid, you're kind of like, man, that's, don't screw this thing up. What can I do? And I guess for me, it's like, I'm going to give everything I can for my son or my daughter to succeed at whatever they want to do. Mm-hmm. And if you try steering them a certain way, I played with guys in the minor leagues that hated baseball. They absolutely hated baseball, but they were really good at it. There are guys that play the game because they make a lot of money and they're good at it, but they hate what they do every day. And life's too short for that. Yeah. So I think my to answer the question is give them the tools to succeed. Be there emotionally for them. Uh, the mental toughness is a huge thing because you're going to use it long after you play baseball or football or whatever sport you play. Mm-hmm. Right. And the other question then is the 16, 15, 17-year-old who is in the situation where – Hey, they, they may have a shot. They may have a shot at, you know, D1, D2, D3, uh, going into a league early. Who knows? Like, what kind of advice do you have for that young man or woman? I think the best thing they can do is keep your eyes on the prize. As stupid as it sounds and is keep your eyes on the prize. Whether you're playing, to, there are a lot of good guys that are playing NAIA that find their way to the major leagues. Mm -hmm. There are guys that play division three football as a kick returner that play in the NFL. If you just look to see where these guys, everyone has a different path. Keep your eyes on the price, set a goal and do whatever you can. Look at the goal every day, do whatever you can to get to that level. And that's my, my best advice. And not that I am the absolute best baseball player that's ever played, but I I understand goal setting. Mm -hmm. I understand what I did to get to a certain level and I continue to do it in a professional setting but keep your eyes on the prize. If that's what you want to do, no one's going to tell you that, that you can't because you can always work. There's always something better you can do. So if you're looking to play, not everyone's going to be a division one athlete, mm-hmm. but there's a lot of really good guys that are playing at a division two school that are just as good at division one. So it's set a goal, go out and get it and, and do whatever you can to get there. Yeah. That sounds like it takes uh, and and that's great advice. It's so like crystal clear. It's kind of cliche, but honestly, we've heard it over and over and it's great to hear from uh i'm going to call you an old elite athlete now because <laughs> but, <laughs> Thanks, but it's it's great to hear that from a seasoned athlete who has been there um and seen yeah d2 d3 naia you know i think a lot of our youth put a lot of pressure on that d1 and d1 and d1 um which in that statement you said it, that's that's a great look at it and i'm, I'm so glad that uh that you know 
we know this, but it's very hard when you're that age. You're like, I, this is the only way I can go. And because you don't see any Division Two games on TV, you're yeah. not watching the Division Three game on a Saturday like a football game. You're watching the biggest Division Ones. Yeah. So that's another thing, too, that it's not all about the division you play. Mm-hmm. There are Division One teams that would get smoked by Division Three school on right. a nightly basis. And that's the funny part of it is <laughs> scouts, especially scouts will find you. Yeah. Pete, I got found out of a town with 2000 people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I'm lucky for that. But yeah. I guess for me, it's like they, fi- they will find you. If you're talented enough, they will find you. Yeah. Excellent advice. Hey, Andrew, Andrew Groves, I want to thank you so much for being here with us on uh, Disrupt Education. Great advice. Appreciate you sharing your story. Um, and uh, best of luck on uh, the coming months. So you got a big uh, family change uh, coming up. Thank you, Pete. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you all for listening to the Disrupt Education podcast. Hit that subscribe button. Throw a like out there. Throw me a a question. And uh, I'd love to uh, chat with you a little bit more about disrupting education. We'll talk to you later. 